this is a typical business cycle graph. Now the economy peaked out, um, picked up in, um, in December 2007, then we had this horrific recession, and now we've been going for nine straight years, nine full years of growth. All right. There's only one other time when we've done that, and that was in the 1990s. The average amount of time economy grows after recession is just you know, less than five. So we're doing double that uh, right now. All right. Now, once an economy gets this late stage of the cycle, you know, things get a bit uh, more treacherous. So the question is, all right, we have three possibilities of growth at this juncture. Scenario A, which is sort of the forecast, the projection made by uh, the White House and by many Republicans, which is saying, look, if you, if you cut taxes dramatically, if you slash regulations, if you reduce the trade deficit, if you increase infrastructure spending, then the U.S. economy is going to grow at about 3, 4, 5 percent a year. Very optimistic numbers. Second scenario, scenario B says, well, not so fast. Uh, you know, those, uh, those tax cuts will help, but not perhaps as much as those in scenario A believe. Secondly, we are pretty late in the business cycle right now, uh, and interest rates are picking up. Consumer spending may be soon cooling. So the economy is going to go around 2 to 3 percent. And then we have scenario C, which says, game is up. The game is up. Prepare yourself for a recession, probably perhaps as early as this year. Right? And, and that is in part because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates maybe a bit too quickly, that we're having you know, a real constitutional crisis um, in the United States. This is going to create uncertainty. A business and consumer confidence will fade. It's going to show up in, in spending. Um, and then, of course, we have a major geopolitical eruption. That's scenario C. So which of these three scenarios do we believe will most likely prevail all right, so let's dive down a little bit. Let's take a look and see what's really critical here and why we've come to these conclusions. First of all, we start off with the most important part of the economy, the consumer. All right? And the consumer is doing you know, fairly well. Uh, all right? I mean, we know that unemployment is at 18-year lows. We have seen wages begin to creep up a little bit. Confidence is still pretty, pretty high. Um, so on that score, you can say the economy is doing well and consumers will continue to spend. But here is what some of the concerns are that's pointing to slowdowns next year and in 2020. First of all, after nine years of shopping, you have to wonder whether consumers to some extent are satiated. I mean, how many cars, how many cell phones, how many electronic gadgets and appliances do they need after nine years? And we're starting to see that actually in the data. For example, in terms of car sales, you know, the rate of purchases of car sales really peaked last September at a more than 18 million unit rate, and it has since come down steadily to about 16. So that is just one area of, of concern. Inflation is also moving up. So clearly it is a situation where companies are not yet confident enough and they don't see a sufficient return on their investment to be able to, at this juncture, commit to capital spending. Because you want to know, you're not going to get a return on that you know, investment in another year or two. It might take a while. But because of the uncertainty, because of the tariffs, because of the prospect of a real trade war, that hurdle to finally go over and give a thumbs up and say, yeah, we're going to make that leap and make that spending, uh, that hurdle is getting higher and higher. Now, I just want to tell you a side story. We have actually tried to do our best in our company to boost the economy in our own way. We, uh, we moved not too long ago to some new offices. True story. Moved to some new offices. And one day we got to the office and we found a box of flowers. And it was very nice. We took a look at the flowers. There was a card attached to it. Looked at the card, read it, and it said, please accept our deepest condolences. Well, that's odd. That was strange. So we called up the flower shop and, and, and asked them, you know, why did we get these flowers and why this card? Something's wrong. So they said they were going to call us right back, which they did, and they apologized profusely. They apologized profusely. They said there was an accidental switch made. The flowers that we were supposed to get ended up going to someone at a funeral home. And when they read the flowers and the card that they got, it said, best wishes on your new location. Ouch. And finally, one has to really get out in front. One has to be proactive. Get started now um, by having a contingency plan put in place so that when the time comes and the economy does start to slow um, or there is a geopolitical shock, at least you already have some plan well prepared to put in motion that would help mitigate 
the risks that would come from either a sharp slowdown in the economy or a major geopolitical eruption. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it.